That's it. We're live. The first what I ate in a day, what I eat in a day video starts now. It's 1:15. Fruit terry can live in lifestyle. Learn about the benefits and start now. Eating from the vine and feeling divine. Fruit living with nature's design. Oh yeah, baby. What's up? It's the first what I eat in a day video here back in Canada and obviously I got myself a nice little watermelon little watermelons bigger than my head this thing cost 20 bucks it's fucking heavy man it's over 20 pounds that's for sure and I know that to be true because it's 80 cents a pound and it cost over $20 so if you did the math that's well over 20 pounds so what we're gonna eat today at uh, it's 120 almost not quite, it's 119. I haven't eaten all day, I've been doing some intermittent fasting, which I wouldn't recommend if you're just getting into raw food. If you're just getting into raw food, I would recommend starting off your morning with fruit smoothie, getting some calories right away, and then grazing throughout the day, having a substantial lunch, and then having a substantial dinner as well. But uh, I've been doing this thing for a few years now, raw veganism, so I don't really get cravings for other foods unless I'm like really really hungry so those cravings still come up but they only come up if I'm like really really hungry and I don't really uh, feel hunger anymore when I'm not eating I just feel like oh I'm either kind of tired or hey I could, I could eat something I've got room to eat but I never feel like that like that hunger let's zoom in on here it's a bit less not so intimate I'm so zoomed out um, so that's something that goes away when you've been raw vegan for a long time your hunger just dissipates disappears completely uh, but what we've got here for uh, breakfast at 1 in the afternoon is we've either got a big watermelon or a honeydew. This honeydew smells so good, I don't know how it's legal. There are some drugs out there that are like, oh my god, this drug is amazing, no wonder it's illegal. Whereas this fruit is legal. Like, how is this legal? Oh my god, I'm like salivating like crazy right now, smelling this. I was standing in line at the grocery store just waiting to check out and I was like, holding these couple melons in my hand. A honeydew and I had a cantaloupe. I was just going back and forth. And I, unbelievable, I cannot believe how good they smell. This is passion of the fruit right here, man. Passion of the fruit. Alright, so for this What I Eat in a Day video, we're going to start off with this honeydew. I hope it's ripe. I think it's ripe. The way to tell if a honeydew is ripe, or you tell, to tell if this cantaloupe is ripe, make sure it smells good, and also make sure the bottom is kind of soft. I should press in a little bit. A little bit. You should be able to press it in. And the top as well. But... Yeah, okay, so let us begin. Uh, this is what I got in stock, really, for fruit. Bunch of melons. I'm contemplating... Oh, I also got this melon. I'm contemplating doing a uh, melon fast for the month of June. If you guys would be interested in following along the journey of just complete melons for a month, let me know. My friend Anne did six months on just melons. So cantaloupe, honeydew, rock melon, all sorts of different melons for six months. So I'm like, hey, you know what? June's coming up. The melons are looking pretty good. Maybe I'll get on the melon melon train and just uh, melon up. Melon up. Is that the brand of melons? I think it is. Yeah, right here. Look at that. Advertising's working. Can you see that? Melon up. I'll show you right here. The stickers don't want to come off. Okay. Oh, shiza. Melon up. Okie dokie. So first things first, we're going to get the cutting board and cut the cantaloupe. Cutting board. Check. Knife. Check. And this is a shout out to all the people making these What I Eat In A Day videos in the cooked vegan scene. Props for spreading the vegan message. Props for showing people how to make vegan food throughout the day. Props for making it look cool. Props for just reminding people to eat vegan. Uh, this video I'm dedicating to the raw fooders to show how easy the food prep is. A lot of people think food prep is way too exhaustive when you're getting to raw food. You gotta dehydrate things, you gotta make smoothies, you gotta make juices. None of that is actually true. All you gotta do is find yourself a good piece of fruit, cut it open, eat it, done. Enjoy, baby. So 
When you're splitting a melon too, you want to make sure you cut it vertically. When you're sharing a melon, you cut it vertically. If you're having it yourself, I like to cut it fat wise. I'm having it by myself, so I'm going to cut it fat wise. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Ooh, it smells good, it feels good. This is going to be a good one. And the reason you want to cut it vertically if you're sharing it is because the top and the bottom have different levels of sweetness. I forget which it is, but either the top is sweeter or the bottom is sweeter. Anyways, let's uh, let's dig into this one. I'll just put the seeds in a little bowl here. Oh my god, it smells so good! I'm pumped on this one, man. I hope it's good. I have a good feeling about it. See, if I did melons for just June, that would be pretty dope. Um, I wouldn't miss any other fruits, no problem, man. Melons are my favorite. Kind of expensive at this point, but um, like this honeydew cost me five bucks, but I think it would be worth it. Mm. Oh yeah. Everything the body needs, nothing it doesn't. I'm done. You saw my meal prep. That was it. Cut the thing in half, take out the seeds. That's my meal prep. Meal's done. See you later. Mm. Holy shenanigans. Mm. <clears throat> so hydrating, so juicy, so sweet, and so, that's just sweet, that's just hydrating, that's just juicy, but deep with flavor, rich with flavor. That flavor carries on through to the other side, man. Ooh, amazing. Now, quick word on watermelon. While we're here, while we're talking about watermelons, uh, people sometimes get melon belly. I personally get melon belly. Now just a quick word here while we're talking about melons. I want to mention melon belly. A lot of people can get melon belly if they eat melon, watermelon too quickly. And it happens to a lot of people. At the Woodstock Fruit Festival especially, you're seeing like a concentration of people eating watermelons and around like seven, eight, nine in the morning, you're seeing people like laying down, just like holding their belly and you're like, oh, what's up? And they're like, oh, melon belly. And people are just down for the count. I was just hanging out with Tim Sheaf in Hawaii. He was living with us for a bit and he was having a lot of melon and he was, having, he was having a lot of melon belly as well. And so the solution for that, for avoiding melon belly, if you don't want to avoid melons altogether, you can take a little chromium supplement, like peak, it's called like, I forget what it's called, some, something, I'll put the link in the description for the chromium you gotta get to avoid melon belly. It saved my ass so many times. You just take a few little pills, or even just one little pill if you're a tiny person, and then eat your melon, and you'll avoid the melon belly altogether. If you don't want the synthetic chromium little supplement, which I don't think does any harm, then you can also eat some lettuce with your melon, because lettuce especially is rich in chromium. So eat your lettuce before and during your watermelon, and you'll have a better chance at avoiding the melon belly. But I would seriously just recommend the chromium supplements. They're really easy to carry with you, travel with, if you're gonna be having a lot of melon. Um, I wonder if I have any left in stock here. Oh, I do. Yeah, this is what they look like. I got them from my friend uh, Dan, Sunfruit Dan in Thailand. So maybe I should actually take one of these before I eat this watermelon today. Uh, Dan's a good fruitarian friend of mine, and uh, his girlfriend actually just died recently in a uh, traffic accident in Thailand, which um, he unfortunately had to witness. So she died, and she was pregnant, six months pregnant with Dan's child, and so the child died as well, of course. And um, Dan right now is is uh, obviously traumatized by the event, but what's worse now, on top of that, is the Thai the Thai judge, or the Thai court, or whatever, the Thai police. People, I'm not sure who exactly, but somebody in Thailand is prosecuting Dan and charging him. They're accusing him of causing the accident. Um, but Dan pleads obviously not guilty. He was just riding his bike in a straight line, slammed on the brakes, because uh, the car in front of him was like stopped immediately as well. They slammed on the brakes, the car, or the moped that they were on tipped over, and the girl fell off, his girlfriend fell off and got run over by a car. 
So it wasn't Dan's fault. You know, it was the whole, there was a whole incident. Dan was just riding his bike. He didn't do anything illegal. He wasn't drinking. He wasn't on drugs. He's a freaking fruitarian, man. Um, this unfortunate event just so happened to happen to him, but he's getting accused. So anyways, point of this story is, um, I'll put a link in the description for this story if you guys want to follow the story along. He's trying to raise some money to pay for the lawyers, to pay for the legal battles um, that he's going to have to go through. He's trying to raise like 7,000 euro. He's already raised 1,000 euro. So it'd be amazing if you guys could contribute, whatever, 5, 10, 20 euro, or 20 bucks or whatever, American, Canadian, whatever money you got, even 5 bucks would, would be amazing. You can contribute to help a fellow raw vegan out in uh, these tough times. Thailand can be a bit of a corrupt country, which is uh, quite unfortunate because it is an amazing country uh, for fruit and for weather and for people, but the government's kind of corrupt there. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with this case, but all the best. I hope he, uh, he wins this and hope he comes out um, not guilty, of course. But yeah, anyways, back to the melon talk here, guys. I just want to bring up Dan's story because he's the one who got me into the chromium and helped me avoid not just melon belly, but mango belly. I was eating so many mangoes in Thailand and I would get this massive gut ache after I'd have like six or seven of them really, really quickly. But if I took the, the little chromium supplement, I wouldn't get any mango belly either. But anyways, guys, back to this honeydew. It's been a while since I've had a honeydew. Mmm. Mm. Freaking good. My uh, my only experience with fasting, I have two experiences with feasting, I should say, on melons. Well, one time I did five days on just watermelon, and at the end of the five days I ran a 5K, and I won the race, that was pretty fun. Just my fifth day on just melons, I'm running the race, I'm, like, I'm feeling it freaking amazing. Passed the guy the last minute, first place in the race. That was back in my you know, running days, four or five years ago. Um, and uh, the other experience I had was when I was, it was about three years ago, and I forget the type of melon it was. It was like, it was something, I think it was this type actually. It was either this type or it was some white flesh honeydew, I forget. But either way, it was like a ridiculously delicious melon. And I did about uh, three days on it because the first day I went to get the melons, I came home, I ate it, I was like, oh my god, this is actually like the best thing ever, actually the best thing ever. I feel amazing, it tastes amazing, it's quite affordable, I'm going to go back and get more. So I drove back that same night and grabbed a whole bunch of more melons, like I grabbed all the stock, came home, next day I finished it all, went back to the store, grabbed a whole bunch more, they thankfully stocked back up. And I honestly felt like I was coming up on acid the whole three days, like I wasn't sure if it was safe to drive, I wasn't sure if it was safe to go to the gym with my friends, like I was tripping on fruit. Like high quality fruit, high vibrational food. When you eat fruit that's super high vibe, and you put that in your body, you're gonna feel super high vibe. This is why I, I'm a, I, I condone the fruit message. This is why I wanna, you know, emphasize fresh fruit. This is why I wanna promote eating whole fresh, ripe, raw, juicy fruit. Because the more of it you eat, the better you're gonna feel. And you gotta eat it at the exclusion of other food. You can't have this amazing fruit and then go have a McDonald's cheeseburger and expect to feel amazing. You can't have this and then have some other like cooked vegan crap that you know is crappy and expect to feel amazing. This is not a supplement. Fruit is not a supplement. Fruit needs to be eaten at the exclusion of all unhealthy foods. If you want to be healthy, you've got to eat healthy foods at the exclusion of unhealthy foods. Just saying. Alright guys, so I'm going to finish this melon. The other half. Then I'm going to go outside on the deck and get some sun because I want to bathe in that sun, man. I want to bathe in that sun. Look how gorgeous it is outside. So nice for Canada, man. This is like Hawaii all the time, but for Canada, when you get this weather, you got to take advantage. All right, peace out. So sun break is over. Time to crack into this melon, see how it is. I asked the girls at the store what the return policy is in case it's not good, can I return it? And they say, yeah, sure, just bring a receipt and we'll give you your money back if you don't like it. So that's the great thing about buying fruit. If it's not good, just bring it back. But most of the time, it is good. But if it's not good, just bring it back, no worries, no issues, you're not gonna waste any money, just keep your receipt. So let's crack into this guy right now. Looks decent. 
We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's got quite a bit of white on there. I hope it's good. Usually the watermelons I have don't have as much white, but we'll see. Right for the middle first, the sugar shot. Moment of truth when you're buying a big melon, you wanna make sure it's sweet. It's good. I'm actually gonna turn this one into a smoothie. I'm gonna blend it up. Rum, rum, rum. Maybe add a little bit of a couple mint leaves in there. Run some mint out in the garden. Mint plus watermelon. Blend it up. Really good. You always want to grab the biggest leaves first. Let the smaller leaves grow into the big ones. It's tempting to grab the young little baby tender ones, but grab the older ones first. Grab the bigger leaves first. That way it'll make room for the smaller ones to grow. Just had a little sip and it's super minty, so adding more melon is going to help and dilute it as well. I don't think I needed to use six leaves of mint, I probably could use slurry. Potent herbs, man, potent herbs. People talk about herbs doing like the healing in the body. They take these herbal cleanses and stuff, but it's the body that heals itself, man. Herbs just stimulate. And you can't really stimulate yourself to health, but I guess you can stimulate your mind to become aware of how to do the healing. Herbs might teach the wisdom that your body actually heals itself. You are what you eat, man, and I think all plants are wise. When it comes to healing, though, you've got to realize that it comes from within. The inner vibes that you're holding. Are you holding good vibes or are you holding bad vibes? I think if you're holding really good vibes, you're gonna be in a really healthy state. Some of the nicest people I know are really kind, considerate people. They, uh, they're just really healthy, man. And vice versa. Some of those unhealthy people I know, they're just, they're not holding good vibes. They're not emitting good vibes. They're not sharing the good vibes. I think the healthier you are, you know, it's just a symptom of how high a vibe you're holding. How high of a vibe are you holding? Fruit helps you hold high vibes. High vibrational food equals high vibrational mood. But really your focus, where are you focusing? That's gonna determine your feeling in life. Are you focused on the good things? Are you focused on the progress? Are you focused on what you're grateful for? Are you focused on all the blessings you have in life? Are you focused on inspirational content? Because if you are, that's what you're going to feel, man. You will feel whatever you focus on. I promise you that. All right, well, that's about going to do it. That is about going to do it. Let's have a sip of that. Mm-hmm. Mm you can live on that for sure. Oh yeah, you can live on that for sure. A super potent mint though, man, from the garden. Wow, that is minty as. I could honestly probably blend up the other blender, the other watermelon into this as well, mix it up, and uh, mix it back and forth between all the mint that's in here, and that would be a perfect amount of mint. So when you're mixing mint with watermelon, make sure you use a little bit, not six or seven leaves like I grabbed over there. But anyways guys, I'm going to go take a little uh, chromium supplement. I shall take it right here. You can see that. Evidence. Evidence that I'm taking it. I don't want to get melon belly. And I want to be able to you know, drink this within the next 20 minutes or so. Some people don't get melon belly. But some people definitely do. 
Apparently if the fruit was grown with more chromium, then uh, if there's more chromium in the soil, then we wouldn't be needing it from supplements. All right, there you go. Be sure to take the chromium before you have your meal, or at least with it, ideally before, but don't take it after. Once, you're, once the melon belly hits, you don't want to take the chromium then, it's too late. Same with the, uh, digestive enzymes. If you want to take digestive enzymes with your cooked food meals to help it digest, I would really encourage that. I would definitely um, promote that. You know, if you're gonna eat cooked food, have a digestive enzyme, or two or three or four or five before your meal. And if not before your meal, then definitely during your meal. But no sense in taking the digestive enzyme after the meal. Because by that time the food's already in your gut, it's already in your stomach, it's already like, oh, what the fuck am I doing here? So you want to set up the environment for proper digestion. You can do that by taking the chromium supplement before, or the digestive enzyme supplement before your meal. Yo, what's going on guys? It's now 5.30. I just finished up that smoothie now. There it is. The watermelon smoothie is now done. I'm going to dice this one up here and make another smoothie and that'll be the that'll be it that'll be it for the day so basically one massive watermelon today plus uh, that honeydew and I actually had a couple of these tomatoes the, the whole package is gone but I only ate like four or five of them these little ones right here I was on the phone with someone and I was just th talking on the phone grabbed a couple of tomatoes and ate them so Tomatoes and uh, watermelon, man, the ultimate like lycopene combination there. Um, if you got a sunburn and you load up on lycopene, that sunburn's gonna go away really, really quickly. Lycopene helps your body deal with sunburns amazingly well. Uh, so, yeah, that's it, guys. I'm gonna make this last smoothie now here. That'll be it for dinner. And I'll go to bed uh, definitely under caloried for the day, way below maintenance level. But it's all right every now and then to go to bed a little hungry. Um, a little under maintenance level. You don't need to eat an, an enormous amount of food every single effing day unless you got a gun pointed at your head and someone's like eat an enormous amount of food every single day or I'll kill you then you should probably do that or unless you're trying to gain weight but if you're not trying to gain weight you're trying to be healthy and maybe you want to cut the gut for summer maybe you want to look good for the beaches or whatever it's alright if you've got the discipline and the willpower to go you know a day every now and then just a little bit under your maintenance level so that your body can shed the weight a lot quicker i would recommend focusing on getting fit and focusing on getting healthy and making that your prime objective and just eating in tune with what your body wants definitely don't don't have the objective or the goal to restrict it all if you focus on health you focus on fitness you're going to eat just the right amount i'm sure and uh, you're going to have all the energy in the world all the vitality in the world to do the things that you want to do to the energy to do the things you want to do and just to look the part, feel the part, act the part and inspire others to do their part in you know, just raising the vibe of the planet by raising the vibe of themselves. Alright guys, so if you focus on improving yourself by focusing on what it is you want then you're going to set the example for other people and then they can do the same. So right now guys, I'm just focusing on the fruit, feeling good and uh, looking forward to that last smoothie right there. That'll be great. So, peace out, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. You both get equal sweetness. This bottom part, way sweeter than the top part. Hot dang. Mm. This smoothie is gonna be dang.